tried to support her as much as I could, but it's gotten really, really bad lately. She's had a break. She says, I'm Nick Schneider. I've taken over Charles' body. Long before anyone heard of Lori Vallow Daybell, her estranged husband, Charles Vallow, called police to try to get help for her, only to be killed by her brother, Alex Cox, months later. I'm Anjanette Levy, and thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. In 2019, Charles Vallow was the first person in Lori Vallow Daybell's orbit to die under suspicious circumstances, and his murder has come up repeatedly in Lori Vallow Daybell's trial in Idaho. She is on trial for the murders of her seven-year-old autistic son, JJ, whom she adopted with Charles, and her 16-year-old daughter, Tylee Ryan. Lori Vallow Daybell is also charged with conspiring to kill Tammy Daybell, the late wife of her current husband, Chad Daybell. To understand how this story truly unfolded, you have to go back to January of 2019. That's when Charles Vallow contacted police trying to get help for his wife. Vallow returned from a business trip and all of the money had been taken out of his bank account and his truck had vanished from the airport. Lost her mind. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it. We're LDS. She thinks she's a resurrected being and a... And a a god and member of the 144,000. She's come to Jesus is coming next year. She took all the money out of her bank account today. My truck has gone from the airport. She went to the airport and got it. I just flew in from Houston, from Dallas. Houston and Dallas. So, uh, so where's your truck? I don't know. Charles was seeking an involuntary commitment for Lori, meaning he went to a court and he wanted a judge to order her into a mental health facility for treatment and an evaluation. Charles really believed that Lori had had a break from reality and truly lost her mind. Charles told the officer she had threatened to kill him the day prior. So she's speaking as a spiritual being. She's not here. She's okay. lost her reality. Is, has, is, this, is this just all recent or has it been it's going on? It's been going on for about four or five years. It's gotten really, really bad lately. She goes to the temple every day and speaks with Moroni and Jesus Christ. And they tell her what to do. And now she came to her today and... Last couple of days, she says, I'm not Charles. Uh, you're not Charles. You're Nick Schneider. I don't know where she gets his names from. She got all this stuff from these people in Utah who uh, tell her how many past lives she's had and, and, and probation she's had. And What's interesting about the timing of all of this is that Lori had met Chad Daybell a few months prior in the fall of 2018. A blurred body camera video shows Lori and her daughter Tylee at the police station where an officer talked about Charles's request to have Lori committed. It's committal paperwork. Right. They can hold you for 24, 40, however long they deem it necessary to get you evaluated. Right. Based off just what your husband said. says. Yeah. Wow. So uh, the doctors play it <laughs> safe. Doc I just think it's funny because he's trying to tell me. Right. Kind of right. So. That's very smart. Because I'm really the one that did and, something wrong. But no, here's the thing. Is I don't know, and I'm not going to take sides. Right. No, but no, no. just talking know. to you, I mean. I don't see you being a danger to yourself or any, anybody else. You got your kids to school. Right. I don't know. But I'm not going to place that. I'm just going to let you know that we are required, if you're here, that we will, even against with fours, if we have to, right. if you're still here when it's approved, um, we'll have to take you to CDI. Um, I have a gym where I could work out. Yeah. I'm so, happy. <laughs> like I said, we... You'll be okay without your mama. You are going to get a padded room. <laughs> <laughs> Lori Vallow was not committed to a mental health facility. Fast forward six months later, Charles Vallow is shot to death by Alex Cox, Lori Vallow Daybell's brother. What happened today? How did it get to this? I don't know. He was enraged. Well, what's going on? What happened? Oh, he was talking with my sister earlier. No, what happened today, though? Like, just in the last 20 minutes? He came to, He came at me with a bat. Okay. Was he living here or no. visiting? He came to pick up his son. Okay, is his son inside? No. My sister took him to school. Okay, so it was just you at the house? Yes. And he came, how long, what time did he come to pick up pick up the son? Uh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, maybe. Oh, okay, so. what was he yelling at you about? Uh, I found my sister because I'd broken up a tussle with him earlier. Told me not to interfere anymore with them or I'd pay. And he came at me with a bat. Okay, so he showed up in the house with a bat in his hand? No. Okay, so. There was a scuffle earlier with my 
my sister and my niece. My niece got involved. About earlier, meaning earlier this week, earlier no, 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 this morning? No, just this morning, before they left. Before your, your wife left? My sister. Before your sister left? Yeah. Okay. Who lives here with you? Nobody. I don't live here. My sister lives here and my niece lives here. And you're and just visiting? I was visiting for the night. Okay. Alex Cox went on to tell the officer about an argument. So you both, uh, so you get in an argument, what is it over? Well, it was over my sister. He was he was uh, getting physical with her, and so my niece came out with her bat, and then he took the bat away from her. Wait a minute, I thought you said your niece left. She did, but this is before. So before before your uh, your sister and your niece left, yeah. at some point uh, your sister and her husband are arguing, Yes. verbal argument. And then your niece pulls out a bat? Well, it wasn't her. He was getting close, and she came out to defend my sister with her bat. Your niece? Yes. Okay. And then she poked at him, and then he took it away. Okay. And then I, I stepped in and told him they needed to separate. He's, he's coming back at me, and he's still got the bat in his hand. I'm like, what are you doing? And where are you at? Where we are you both at? We're in the living at? room. Okay. And then... I turned around and he hit me in the back of the head with the bat. So I went to my room and got my gun. I so carry it. you went to your room, meaning yeah, the room you're room staying, staying in? Yeah. Okay, and you brought your, uh, brought a gun yes. with you? Yes. Do you always yes. bring a gun? I can still carry always. And then uh, I told him to put the bat down and he wouldn't and he came at me Jumped again. The wife. Okay, so walk me through it. So you go back into your room. So I, go, I just went back to the living room. I'm like, what is your problem? With the gun again. Yes. And I said, I want you to put that bat down. He wouldn't do it. And he's like, do you? and he came at me with the bat again after he'd already hit me in the head. So I shot him to stop him. Okay. And then what happened? That was it. A short time after the shooting, surveillance video captures Lori Vallow pulling up to a drive through window at a fast food restaurant with JJ in tow. Police then interviewed Lori. He comes back in, I wouldn't give him his phone, he was screaming at me to give him his phone. He was very worried about whatever was on his text mm -hmm. that he did not want me to see. And so I was just holding it there and he was screaming at me. So Tylee came out of her room, upset, mm -hmm. and she had a bat and she told him to leave her mother alone, like, mm -hmm. right? So she was really, whatever, and he's screaming at her, don't you hit me with that bat, blah, 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 blah. And then my brother heard all the commotion because he was in there in bed. And so he came out into the main room and um, I guess whatever. What's your brother's name? Alex. Alex, okay. Mm -hmm. He was screaming and he was super upset and whatever. And um, he was yelling at Tylee, don't you shut me with that bad and blah, blah, blah. And so Tylee, I guess, I don't know if she swung at him or what, but he like grabbed the bat from Tylee and then went to like hit Tylee with the bat. It was... And I was right there, they were right there, and my brother grabbed him from behind, mm -hmm. like, just to stop him from hitting Tylee. You go like this, like, he grabbed him, like... Yeah, from behind, like, uh -huh. just kind of to pull him back. Uh -huh. And then um, they got into the thing, and he's hitting him with the bat, and they're on the ground, like, grappling around or whatever. And then, um, I mean, I was all... And he... Quickly. <laughs> and he hit your brother with the bat while they were grappling and stuff? Yeah, I, yes, he was hitting him with the bat, like swinging the bat, you know, back and forth, knowing JJ was in the car, yeah. right? And so then he got up and he had the bat like this towards me, and I was going around the other side to try to just get out of his range where mm -hmm. he couldn't hit me. And then um, I had told Tylee, because she was on the ground, because after he took the bat from her, she fell back. And so I told her, I was like, go get in the car with JJ. Like, I don't want JJ coming in to the house, or, mm -hmm. and I wanted her out of the way. I wanted the kids out of the way, whatever this fight was going to be. Then it was Tylee Ryan's turn to talk to police. So my stepdad was like, he didn't, he was like, I don't even know how to explain it. He honestly just looked like kind of a crazy person. Okay. Like screaming and like his face was beat red he just looked like really mad i remember when he took the back of me i saw his face for like a split second and i honestly like it didn't even look like him he just looked like pure like rage uh -huh. like he was just seeing red so i haven't really seen him like all the way like that before that's like the craziest i've ever seen him and then my uncle was kind of calm like, not super calm, obviously, it was, like, a stressful situation, mm -hmm. but he's, like, 
I don't know, he was kind of just standing there in the doorway, kind of just being protective of my mom, but mm -hmm. not, he wasn't yelling or really saying anything. Okay. And my mom was just kind of, he was yelling and my mom was kind of just like talking. Okay. So, yeah. Do you, but you don't remember, if you do, like what your mom was saying at all or what, what he was mad about? No, not really. I'm sorry. Okay. Based on the interviews at the time, police determined that Alex Cox acted in self-defense. Alex Cox died months later in December of 2019 of natural causes. And unbeknownst to anyone at the time, J.J. and Tylee had been murdered in September of 2019. We'll be on the record here in Fremont County. It is 1144 here on the 26th of May, 2021. Good morning to everybody. We will um, call up case number... CR 2221-1624, State of Idaho versus Lori Noreen Vallow. Following Lori Vallow Daybell's arrest for the murders of J.J. and Tylee, Chandler police took another look at the shooting death of Charles Vallow. Lori was charged in Arizona nearly two years to the date of Charles's death with conspiring with her brother, Alex Cox, to murder Charles Vallow. The murder of Charles has come up in testimony in Lori's trial in Idaho to show the timeline of events and a possible motive, money. May I publish your honor? You may. Detective, what was sig significant about that document to your investigation? Well, first off, she's uh, explaining that Charles Vallow, her former husband, had passed away and she was looking for information on how to obtain uh, monies to be forwarded to her address as she was moving. Um, in and of itself, it appears just to be a, a, a normal uh, you know, exchange of information that, that she's requesting. But if you look at the date and time, that's the part that stands out to us as the investigators. And why was that? Why was the date and time significant? Well, the date of the email sent was September 9th. And pursuant to our investigation, we believe Tylee was killed uh, between the 8th and 9th of September. And the time on the email that was sent was 5.03 p.m. So this is just hours after Tylee was, we believe, buried in the backyard of Chad Daybell. The Arizona case against Lori Vallow-Daybell is essentially on hold because the Idaho trial is underway. That case was filed first, so it's proceeding first. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.